Is this thing on? Is this thing on? Hello. Hello. <laughs> Booze dancing is on, supposedly. If the uh, buttons were pushed and the monkeys are turning into little, little wheels, we are back together again for another wonderful podcast. And this is the part where we just jibber jabber about nothing for a few minutes, correct? Some would argue that this whole thing is nothing but jibber jabber. Some would argue this is the best part of the show. Some would. Who would that be? <laughs> <laughs> The people who like a really short podcast. Hey, hey, here you go. Ready? The phrase of the day. I heard this at work. Not my monkey, not my circus. Not my monkey, not my circus. Yeah. That's Basically. good. I like it. You like it? I do. In what context would that be good to hear at work? <laughs> <laughs> when you get asked a question, that's not your problem. So not my monkey, not my circus. It sounds like there's a problem, though. <laughs> but it's not your problem. It's not your problem, but it's still your company. <laughs> so you're still... Uh, uh, you got to pass the buck. It's like someone saying the building's on fire, but I don't have to worry about it. It's three <laughs> floors, floors below me. I'll be fine. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, we are back for another day of monkeys and passing the buck and TV talk and things. So this is what we watch when we drink on the Booze Dancing Entertainment Network. Should we uh, get the show going? Well, should we maybe roll an intro? Yeah, that's what I mean. Get oh, the intro yeah, going. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll roll the intro. Let me roll the intro. Hold on. Let me find it. I can't find it. Okay, I found it. Let me run it. Ready and... Welcome to What We Watch When We Drink, a Booze Dancing Entertainment Network podcast featuring the lively discussions about movies, TV shows, and anything else that we're watching while we drink our favorite boozy beverages. If you enjoy this show, please subscribe on Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, Google, Audible, and anywhere else you get your podcasts. You can also find us on boozedancing.com. And if you have any questions, comments, show or drink suggestions, email us at boozedancing at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. And we are back. We are back for what we watch when we drink on the Booze Dancing Entertainment Network. This is the show where we talk about what we watched, what we want to watch, what we're watching, and what we want to watch. And all the while, we'll be drinking some interesting spirits along the way. And tonight, would anyone like to tell the uh, home listening audience what we're going to be drinking, what we'll be perusing through? We are going through a trio of whiskeys from Elements of Isla, which is by Elixir Distillers. Correct. And these are created by the great Oliver Chilton. Do you want me to read the little blurb on the brochure about Elements of Isla in general? And before you go too far, we want to thank uh, Sam Felmus and Chris Udi at Impex Beverages for the samples. Uh, very kind of them to send those to us. And we're going to happily taste them as we start talking about some TV in a few minutes. And our first one is, our first whiskey is... This is the Elements of Isla Cask Edit. It is part of the new core range trilogy alongside Sherry Cask and Bourbon Cask. Cask Edit is a composition or edit of refill bourbon and sherry casks and is bottled at 46% for the perfect balance of drinkability and personality. And you said it was a, a 46%. This is a 46%er. And this is bourbon and sherry casks, as you said. So are we going to put our noses in this and see what happens after we do the little ting, clink, clink? I got to pour it first. Hang on, I got to pour. I got to pour. I got to pour. Well, I love the labels on these things. I do too. I just think the 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 labeling on all the elements of Isla expressions are just awesome. You know, if they had these in chemistry class, maybe I would have paid attention. Maybe I would have been there right with you. Yep. Maybe, maybe, maybe. All right, ready for a cheers? One, two, three. Wow, oh, nothing broke. Excellent. So this is again the cask edit. Single malt from Isla's South Coast with a fresher, fruitier type style from the north. So we got a couple different distilleries here blending this together. Well, this smells lovely. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a like a really light barbecue, maybe like a like a Carolina barbecue. A little fruity. I'm getting the fruity on it. Yeah, yeah cuz it's yeah. not like it's not going to be like a sweet like Memphis barbecue where you no, get out molasses and sugar. There's a little bit of, you know. So it's almost like a little cherry in there. Mm, yeah, maybe, maybe I could see that. I could, I could see a little, uh, you know, the cherry juice from like a fine maraschino cherry. Maybe a little butterscotch. Butterscotch. Hmm. There's something sweet in there. I don't know. I'm going in. Mm. 
Mmm. Oh, that was an assault on the taste buds. I got a quick, quick hit of heat in the front. Wow. It's all up front. It's all front third. Salty. Mmm. Yeah, good bit of salt. Yeah. Wow, it is really maritimey. Mm. Do we want to play the game of trying to figure out what the, the distilleries are? It doesn't matter. It almost is uh, Lafroigie. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it's Kalila and Lafroigie. Yeah, too. Kalila on the north because uh, yeah. somebody says north, somebody says south. That's where I'm going. That was delicious. It's got a little oiliness too. It's delicious, yeah. yeah, it does. I think the second bite here is gonna be the second. Better. Second sip's mm-hmm. even better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, that's really really nice. It's even better, and you get a little like a little of that oiliness, a little meaty, a little bit of. Did you think it was more than forty six percent? No, it's 46. Oh, did I think it was? Yeah. It felt a little hotter at first. I agree. It felt a little bit hotter. I think the nose seemed a little hotter, too. Yeah, you get a little bit of salt. You get a little bit of... It's not super sweet, though. It's good. Now. It's really oh. not. It's almost like a little tart. Yes. You know, there's like maybe like a little bit of citrus or like a, like a lemony. Yeah. You said you said um, oily. I think it's yeah. definitely oily, but not heavy. It's mm. not a really heavy gram. Mm. And not a whole lot of finish. No. Are you no, sure? it's a little wispy. But it's good. But, but good. It's really, really good. Good. Good, good, like good, good. It's different, too. It's different from other ones. It is different. And uh, I wonder how much of this is maybe sulfur from the sherry? There's, I don't know. It's it's really unique. It's an interesting blend of two things. That is very, very nice. I like it. I like it. <laughs> Well, we have not done this in quite a while. We have not just had a general TV talk. Um, we'll go around the room. Uh, Mike, where do you want to start? What have you watched since we last spoke about I, uh, kind of the, things? The big thing that we watched, I uh, watched some of the second season of The Mandalorian. You're watching now. Oh, the second, second the third season. season. Sorry, third season. Third season. So you're watching the this third watching. season. Okay. Um, so I've watched some of those. And uh, <laughs> The Last of Us, which is the same guy. Uh-huh. Uh, Pedro Pascal, you know, we, yes. We went through The Last of Us. So that was uh, just a bleak and horrible, horrible slog, but very well acted. So what what made you decide to watch that? Uh, my horrible son is home with the remote and he wants to watch <laughs> everything. There you go. There you go. He hasn't grown tired of post-apocalyptic shows yet. So, you know. Yeah. The, 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 the kids love that kind of stuff, don't they? Um, it reminds them of being at home. <laughs> I watched it. I am not into that genre per se. Like I tried to watch, uh, what was that one? Station 11, The Walking Dead and all those shows. They're not my thing. None of that stuff is my thing. And I, But I figured I'd give this a shot because I've been kind of liking uh, Mr. Pascal yeah. lately. So I figured I'd give it a try. And then also I watched it because the, was the showrunner is the guy from um, Chernobyl. Yes. Another happy-go-lucky story, huh? Uh, it's a it's a sitcom. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a Russian sitcom. It's like Friends, but you know, centered in Chernobyl. But I went back and watched Chernobyl after I watched like the first episode of The Last of Us because I was kind of curious, and I got to say, Chernobyl was pretty damn good. I liked yeah. it. Yeah, that was. I liked well, it too. I mean, like is a relative term because it's no, oh I liked God, it. it. I mean, it, it's not like it's a it's a joyful thing. No, no, no. But it's I just like incredibly it. well done. Yes, totally. I'm torn on The Last of Us. I have watched those other shows you talked about. It's hard for me to get past the zombie thing because there's been so many of these zombie shows. And yes, this does a different, has a little bit of a different spin because it's really not about the zombies. It's about relationships and about uh, survival in a different way. And it's got some unique elements to it a couple standalone episodes and uh it's based on a game a video game right it's a not, video not, game, a, yeah. not a book so highly acclaimed video game highly acclaimed video game and the and the game uh you the game people are like i think the game community from what i've understood is understand is that they are a little torn on it themselves because it kind of gets away from the original story a little bit and and uh and, you know any kind of whether it's a book or a whatever it's always going to get changed a bit for tv um right. the acting is amazing it's really good i have to admit i'm not a fan fa- i'm not f- a f- big fan of the the girl bella ramsey yeah i didn't like her at first 
but she grew on me once they threw a little bit of humor in there. Yeah, that's true. And you saw uh, what she was going through. I, the yeah. character built, I, and I really grew to like her character a lot. Yes, yeah. and it, a lot of it's about the relationship between her and Pedro Pascal. Yep. And uh, he's great, and everything he goes through from beginning to end. There is some humor to it. Uh, it is There's sort a lot of, of is, humor. But it's, it's, it's also shot beautifully, right? It is. It's really, really well done. So um, I give it a reasonable thumbs up, not a big thumbs up. Uh, it's uh, or a moder- moderate thumbs up. I never was looking forward to it every week. I was just, ah, I guess I should watch it. Stay on, stay on top of it. I liked the Nick Offerman bits in it early of, on. Of course. And uh, I thought Melanie Linsky playing the Kathleen character was... Had a character for her. She normally plays like the bit character as in a comedic role, and she was yep. just a brutal, brutal person. <laughs> it, yeah. was, it was like, ooh, a little bit of an outside the box for you. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting on these kinds of shows. You kind of get used to. It was true in in uh, Walking Dead. Walking Dead. Walking Dead. You start to like a character. You start to get close to them, and then they're dead. Yeah. They're gone. <laughs> Time to go. Time to go. And yeah. the, there's that element of it that is sort of tough to kind of stick with but uh it's done really well so it's yeah. a, it was the hbo big one before getting into uh, succession coming up right yeah I, I really enjoyed it i really really enjoyed it and it, what's interesting now that i'm thinking about it the odd numbered episodes were the really like the first episode i thought was very good the third episode which is the offerman episode no yeah. yep the fifth episode with the two brothers but one, three, and five were probably the three standout episodes. Yeah, they, it and ended it, kind of abruptly. I thought the ending was kind of, it was like a forty-five minute finale. It was a little odd. I think the general consensus across social media and and, and some TV reviews were the same. We, we have to save something for season two. We're gonna I stop guess. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Overall, I liked it. I'm looking forward to season two. So, uh, anything else, Mike? That you got through? I uh, went to two movies. Oh. We went to see Ant Man and the Wasp in Quantum Quantumania, and uh, we saw Shazam two Fury of the Gods. So how were all of those? Uh, Ant Man sets up the next. This is uh, Phase Four, I guess, or Phase Five of the the Marvel Empire. This sets up the new big big bad. You know, the first ones that was all Thanos. This is now going to involve Kang, which is the uh, American actor Jonathan Major. Yep. And he's well, he's having a good year, huh? He he's is in that, and he's in he's in Creed three. He's yeah. uh, he's ringing the bell. He had uh, that World War Two movie too, right? Where he's a pilot. Yeah, right. I can't and think of the name of that. Red, Red, Red Tails. Is... HBO show or Netflix show, uh, which is based on a oh the one we saw last year or two years ago. Yes. When was that? Like in the 19- I can't think of the name of the show. Twenties or thirties or forties. Yeah, what was the name yeah. of that show? I cannot remember it. It was good. He was good. He was sort of the star of that thing too. And, and it had the late Michael K. Williams. Michael K. Williams is in that too. Yep. Sorry, yeah. Mike. Go ahead. We interrupt you. That's fine. I'm used to it by now. Thanks. For <laughs> Six hundred episodes. It's the same every single time. With you two. <laughs> At least it didn't devolve into some conversation about The Wire and Oz. Because you know that's how it always goes with the two. Oh, of you. by the way, speaking of Oz, <laughs> you know the commercials. The state was it? Is it State Farm? Or the, who's the one with? Uh, with mayhem, which 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 show? Which uh, insurance company is that? Allstate. Allstate. He was on Oz. He was Ryan O'Reilly on Oz. Now they had the other guy who played his brother on Oz, Cyril, and they're both like playing like you know they're playing half court basketball in front of the garage. Oh, that's funny. In the episode, and I'm like, oh my god, look at that! It's Cyril and uh, and Ryan back together again. So that's all. That was my side. Speaking of Oz, before I was so rudely interrupted <laughs> again. <laughs> So this sets up the the new big bad uh, with Kang the, the Conqueror. Uh, they alluded to him in the Loki TV show in season one, and now you actually see him firsthand. The movie itself had a much bigger role for Michelle Pfeiffer than I expected, and she's still a tremendous actress. I mean, I'm not phoning mm-hmm. it in. Um, I, I think uh, Michael Douglas is starting to look like an old man. <laughs> so no. He's he's made it he's made it eighty years or whatever and now he's starting yeah. to look like an old man, uh, but the, the the cast was really well done. I thought it was a good movie, and uh, it wasn't too weird sciencey stuff where you kind of lose the audience with like oh this is <laughs> okay. I, I tried to suspend my disbelief but I couldn't. 
<laughs> and and Shazam, if you throw Helen Mirren and Lucy Liu in as the baddies, that's a pretty good show. Helen Mirren was in, in Shazam? Helen one of the baddies. Really? She plays wow. one of the daughters of Atlas. Okay. And they that's try funny. to retake the power. And uh-huh. uh, it's, you know, it's it's silly because it's Shazam and it's supposed to be silly. It was, again, lots of fun. When my wife goes to these movies, she l- usually hates them because they're very comic booky. And she actually came out of that one and said, boy, I like that. I like that a lot. You know, both Ant-Man and uh, Shazam, I know, were not critically acclaimed. I'm not terribly sure what critically acclaim and comic book go together at all. You know, <laughs> true. I, yeah. I, I don't know why they would critically acclaim them. Um, if you are familiar at all with the comic books, I think the guy, uh, Zachary Le- uh, Levi, 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 um, when he plays Shazam, he's playing Shazam as if he's a young kid right. who suddenly has superpowers. He does a tremendous job because he's still like dopey and goofy and all these things. Like at it's one like point, big as a superhero. Yeah. At one point, Helen Mirren goes on like a, they're having a sit down and she goes uh-huh. on this long, lengthy, like villainous tirade. And he stops and he's like, I just got to say. That was so super menacing. It really was. Like, it was so menacing. It just, it was like, that's not typical of what you're going to get. That's um, funny. The, one of the things that's coming out from that movie, though, is that uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson played Black Adam. Right. And Black Adam is supposed to be in these movies with Shazam as sort of like a kind of a bad guy, but maybe not a bad guy kind of character. And apparently, uh, Dwayne Johnson wanted no parts of that and wanted him, him to be the fighting Superman and things like that. Hmm. And there were supposed to be cameos done in both movies and some crossover stuff, and none of that got done because apparently Dwayne Johnson put his foot down and said no. So it'll be interesting to see now that they've kind of scrapped the new Black Adam stuff and replaced some of the people at, at DC running the movies. If uh, the new people come in and go, yeah, we're going to bring a new person in and they're going to do what we tell them to do. But I thought the movies themselves, uh, they're both really good movies. I think on a standalone basis, they don't necessarily involve like that. You know, it's the second of three movies Uh where, you know, this is just a setup for the next one. Uh, I thought on a standalone basis, they were both really good. Uh, And what would you have that you got through watching? Okay, so we did The Last of Us already. I, I really enjoyed that. Uh, this past weekend, I watched The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent with Pedro Pascal. And Is that the Nicholas Cage. Cage one? Yeah. Oh, my God. It was hysterical. Uh, I want to watch it. It, I it was so fun. I had, we had just, we were just laughing. And it's, we're it's all just Nick laying Cage on the ca- playing Nick Cage, right? Oh, and he's got like, he sees like his alter ego, like Nick Cage in Something Wild. You know, who's kind of like telling him what to do, and no, you don't take these bit parts. You're a movie star. And like, <laughs> it was just, it was so good. Pedro Pascal was great. Their chemistry was just hysterical. It was absolutely ridiculous, but it was so fun. And you know who plays his wife? Who plays uh, Nick Cage's ex-wife in the show? Who? Our dear, dear friend Sharon Horgan. Oh, really? That's great. Yeah. Sharon Horgan's in it briefly. Uh, it, it was it was good. It was just a lot of fun. Just out of curiosity, he's been married a whole lot. Was he Probably. married to Sharon Horgan? I, just, I was just wondering. He might have been. He might have been. Wondering. I don't know. No In idea. the long list. I don't know. Maybe. But, oh, it was just a fun movie. It was just really funny. You know, the whole thing was just ridiculous. It was great. I definitely it was great. It. it was like, you know what it was like? It was almost like Central Intelligence with, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. with The Rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what's yeah. his name? Yeah. It had that kind of thing going on. Yeah. You know, Tiffany, Tiffany Haddish is great. She's really good. So I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. I really want to watch it again, too. It's just a good time. Uh, I watched that. I watched a couple weeks ago. I watched the Chris Rock comedy special on Netflix. Yeah. Oh, it how was that? It was Selective Outrage. It started off a little slow for me, but once it got, once it built, it was just really funny at the end. It was just really, really good. And then he, he talks about the slap with... Um, with Will Smith, he goes off on that for quite a while. I'm sure he stirred up some controversy. He's a very funny man. He is very good. I mean, it was a little outrageous at times, a little ridiculous, but overall it was really good. So I, I enjoyed that. And I did a rewatch recently. Of, I just had it on TV. I just had it on, just let it go. Uh, Somebody Somewhere on HBO with um, Bridget Everett. 
that was the show where she um she's in i don't know where she was before but she goes back to live with her family in uh kansas yes that was very good season two's coming out i think in april or so oh, so good. i was like oh let me that watch a, it again that was good it was a great show it was a really really good show um but i watched it again and it was just as good the second time around so i'm looking forward yeah. to the next season so that's pretty much what i've completed okay so i i watched the a couple things um bill there was a uh documentary on uh, oh, bill russell uh, the bill yeah. russell doc oh yeah how was it's called i think it was just called russell right i think called russell, russell. Or, or legend or something i'm really sure yeah okay. uh it was only two episodes maybe 90 minutes a piece or so maybe okay. um it's really good i mean i've grown to love bill russell over the years even though he's a celtic and uh you know i grew up here hating green and hating the celtics and even though the, all those bad times were pretty much before my time it still was part of the the dna of laker fans that we never could get past the celtics and and russell was a part of that the guy won 11 championships two as a two as a player coach um hall of famer but the, you know really humble upbringings his parents were sharecroppers um moved to oakland and of course living with with racism and being really tall and not fitting in with a very white world in the 1940s and 50s and then watching him grow to be this uh legendary basketball player but also a, a an outspoken person on on race relations really interesting guy really interesting person passed away last year his number has been retired for, uh, in all of, like like Jackie Robinson. His number has been retired for the NBA. No one can wear number six in anymore. Um, I really liked it. I thought it was done really well. There's been so many sports documentaries in the last couple of years, it feels like. Um, and they're coming with some really interesting topics, I think. Yeah, uh, I just have I just have one word, overrated. Just overrated. <laughs> just, <laughs> just a little bit. So, uh, so I actually can hate him twice. Once, because Tom Gola was the big hero for my college, LaSalle. We won a national championship with our podunk school in the 50s. We went to repeat, and we lost to Bill Russell in college. At USF, yeah. And then he goes to the Celtics, and we have Wilt, maybe the best basketball player ever, and we lose to them repeatedly. (laughs) Yeah. As he goes on this absurd title run throughout the 60s where – I think they won eight to ten in a year, or maybe Something maybe like nine that, to ten. Yeah. I can't remember what they did. Yeah, and the and the Sixers only got one. The Wilt Russell thing is one of the great sports relationships that we've seen ever. Right? If there's no Chamberlain and, and Russell in the '60s, there's no NBA, arguably. And, and and what's amazing is they they were great friends. So so while there was a rivalry. It, it ended off the court and they were friends throughout their playing time and they became even better friends afterwards. Well, they, they were great friends, except they fell apart in, in the stock. It shows that they, they actually grew apart and they had some, they had some issues that, and it, and it fell apart and they didn't speak together for quite a while. And finally, I believe they they went to, there was some NBA function. They were retired by then and they finally made up and they, they, we're back together again. It was like on a public stage and, and not many years later, Wilt passed away. Um, they were very different people. Wilt was very conservative mm-hmm. and politically and um, had a very, very wild life. And Russell was not that way at all. And he cared about social justice and Wilt was a different, different cat altogether. And somehow they were these giants that battled each other on the court and were friends off the court. Um, I watched the show. It's a while back now, but we haven't talked together for a bit on Peacock called The Calling. Who's that? It's created by David E. Kelly. It's a cop show in New York. I don't know if it's in Brooklyn or where. And it's uh, detectives in a police station. The one lead, the, the lead character is an Orthodox Jew. And although you can't tell from the way he dressed, he dresses in a suit and tie. And he has this spiritual bent about him. And he uh, he has a very unique way of solving crimes and huh. getting and getting uh, bad guys or witnesses to speak to talk. And he's very not mystical, does he, but um, does he beat him with a brisket? He doesn't beat him with a brisket. It's more like a, a, a very large. Was that wrong? Was that wrong? 
That may hey. have been a little bit wrong. <laughs> it's. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's, I'm just not yeah, funny. Funny. If he was Italian and you beat him with like I don't know a gabagool, a prosciutto, you know, you threw a wheel of Parmesan cheese at his <sighs> head. I mean, that would be okay. <laughs> You know, just saying, you know, it's, it's very good. Uh, there's a couple, two long arcs of crimes in, in this, I think like 10 episodes. And he's, he's put together with a, uh, a young detective who wants to learn from him, but uh, uh, doesn't totally understand where he's coming from. Doesn't understand Judaism. Doesn't understand what, what he, what he does. Um, it's it's a it's kind of unique. I really enjoyed it. And hey, is that um? I'm, I'm looking. At, I'm on the the uh, IMDb. Is that uh, Jess from Succession? Is that his partner? Who's Jess? I don't remember Jess. It's uh, what's his name? Um, Kendall's assistant. You might be right. Pretty, pretty girl yeah. with the curly hair. Yes, I think you're right. Yeah, yeah, that's her. He's the one look that does it. Doesn't, hey, uh, look at this. Yeah. And the 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 lead detective, the head of the department. Um, she is this African American actress who's so freaking funny. She's in Schitt's Creek. I don't know her name. She's hilarious. Uh, okay. She has these really big bug eyes. Um, that's kind of famous for her. Uh, notable. So that's great. I really recommend that one. Uh, okay. Lastly, uh, we just finished. Finally, took for us forever. We watched Poker Face on Peacock. Oh yeah, yeah. With was Natasha that? Leone. It is great. Great, 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 great. I can't recommend it enough. It is. Uh, hey, give me Natasha. your peacock. Give me your peacock login, buddy. I'll do that for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not paying for it on the service. Which is actually my son's. Um, <laughs> I don't care. Well, she kind of becomes a drifter after this first episode. She lives in, Ve- uh, I think it's Vegas, some place in Nevada. Works at a casino, and her unique ability is she can tell when someone's lying. Oh. If someone says something, I like the color red. She will say bullshit she knows that the person's lying it's her only real talent and she has helped out a the casino owner at one point and that's how she got her job at this casino and the son of the casino this casino owner is adrian brody and who's kind of a screw up not the best uh guy to run this casino and gets involved with something and she has to leave town and she's on the run because she's being chased across the country by Benjamin Bratt, who works for the casino owner. He's going to track her down. And so each episode after the first one is her landing someplace in the United States with her 1967 Plymouth Barracuda. Do they play hard? <laughs> she gets a job at doing whatever the lo- whatever local job she can find. And then usually something bad happens. It's usually a murder. And then she helps solve the, the, the murder. And every episode is a, some, a standalone until she leaves town to the next to the next episode. It's very funny. There's some big stars in every episode. What was the older woman from uh, in the, the menu from? Oh, yeah. Judith Light. Judith Light's in an episode. It's really uniquely done. And every, one, every episode is, like I said, it's a separate story. And so she has to solve. She doesn't have to solve it. She kind of she gets obsessed with what, what happened. Why did this thing happen? Why did this person die? Okay. Um, and she figures it all out. So, so it's like an old school, you know, it's very old school. And Natasha Leone is so funny and she's really good at, at this. So that's what we watched. So cool. well done guys. Well done. Give me, give me that login. I'll get that for you. Okay. Well, what's our second whiskey from the elements of Isla from uh, Impex beverages on what we watch when we drink. So for round two, this is the Elements of Isla bourbon cask. It is part of the new Cora Range trilogy alongside Cask Edit and Sherry Cask. It is matured in first fill and refill bourbon barrels, and it is bottled at a higher strength of 54.5 to fully showcase the whiskey's natural personality. Whiskey with a five. Five plus. I have just poured this, and I just... Got a little drop on my hands, and it is smelling so darn good. Oh, my gosh. I'm not getting the whiskey with a five on the nose. No. Really? You're right. It, it's a little hotter than the cask at it, obviously. It's not really vapory. My nose is deep in this at Glencairn, and nothing. Not high vapor. You know what I did get, though? I got a hit on, like, smoky vanilla. Yeah, and I get a lot more of, like, the barbecue meat. You want some brisket. I would like to be slapped with the brisket. (laughs) (laughs) 
Yeah, yeah right there. <laughs> Smooth. <Ooh. laughs> oh, that's that's all on the tip of my tongue. That's hot. I went, I went to talk before I had finished swallowing. Ooh. That's not good. Mm-mm-mm. I think I melted the uh, outside of my microphone. Um, wow. So yeah, that nice. is so unique when it's you don't get it on the nose and you get it on on that first bite. Yeah. Wow. Ooh, that's got a nice long finish too. Oh, it's a very long finish. Ooh. That is that yeah. is I gagged on my finish. I gotta go back in. That's got some that's got a little sweetness. A lot of sweetness actually. There's a lot of like vanilla and some sugar. I think that was a porn movie. Vanilla sugar? No, gag on my finish. But anyway. Oh. <laughs> you know. Oh, oh. Yowza. That's nice. A second sip tamps down some of that heat. Yeah, it does. But the flavor is still there. It's really good. Oh, I love the sweetness. This makes me think it's Kalila. I've said this before. I mean, when I get asked what is my favorite distillery, I tend to say it's Kalila. And it's funny because I don't really know much about the standard Kalilas. Right. I know right. about all these independent bottlings we've had over the years. I just love that youngish, less than 10 year old Kalila punchiness and, and smoke. It is just, that's my world. Well, did you get the salinity with this? I, I think I like this one yeah. better than the first one. I think I do too. I mean, the first one was great. This is, this is like a, this is like a step up. I thought that first one was salty. This one's more sweet. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. The saltiness is, is a, is a lot on that first one. And this is more in my wheelhouse. This one right here. I mean, it's not overly sweet. It's just, it's no, no, just no. right. It's vanilla. It's powdered sugar. It's like a smoky cream donut. The cream mm. donut with bacon. Ah, so good. So good. We will have to talk to Sam and Chris to see where we can get these, mm. these guys. Uh, but we really, oh boy, that was great. That's delicious. That, that is, is really good. Wheelhouse really, really good. City. Yes, Wheelhouse yes, yes. City for me. Well, I just love the bird cast too. I just love that the vanilla comes out and yeah, totally. There's a there's a little maltiness to it all. Oh, just mm-hmm. so good. All right. Now we are talking about what we what we're watching. Um, Ange, what are you in the middle of? We can probably we're probably gonna see a lot of crossover here with everybody. Yeah, there's there's a lot of stuff going on here. Um, uh, well, no, there's about four shows I'm watching right now. Three, really three. One that I need to go back to. Uh, the one I need to go back to is Shrinking. I watched the first three episodes. I liked it, but then another. Then I don't know. I just kind of like, eh. I lost interest. It's funny you said this. I was talking to somebody else about this, who loved it, loved it, and can't mm-hmm. is just excited about it. Talked to someone else that was kind of meh on it. I wanted to watch it. No, I'm like, uh, I don't know. Should I even start it? I'm not sure. I don't know. I mean, I like the cast. I like Jason Siegel. Yeah. Harrison Ford is actually really good in it. That's what everybody says. Harrison Ford is actually really, it's its just unusual. I've never seen him do anything like that. You know, this. he was in Star Wars. Was he? He was. Well, who was he in Star Wars? Uh, was he the Wookiee? Uh, he might have been the Wookiee. He might have been our Wookiee. No, in, the, in that last one, he was uh, Ben Solo's, uh, he was his dad. That's true. Was he, he was. was he in another one? I, I just know. remember the last one. No idea. One of the executive producers is Brett Goldstein. Well, yeah, it, it, there's, a, there's a Ted Lasso connection. Yeah. I think yep. it's the same showrunners for for Lasso and this. Uh, speaking of Lasso, I started Lasso season three, Me which too. is apparently the last one. Yep. Uh, I, I like it. I think I like it better than season two. How many episodes are there? I've only seen There's one. Two so far. Oh, I saw the first one. Okay. I was a little skeptical at first because you know how it is. Like when you first start a new season. Well, you're also trying to set the season up on that first episode, right? Right. Right. And it's I'm just hard trying to kind to like... of make a big judgment. I think after one or two episodes. Yeah, by the end of the first episode, I'm like, all right, I'm back in. So, I, yeah, I watched the second episode last night. You know, the only thing that really kind of annoys me is they, they really took the edge off of Jamie Tart. Well, and you could say they took the edge off of uh, Brett Goldstein's character, too. Roy Kent. Yeah, he, right? he tries to be like his old gruff self, but so I think he's a big softie. You could kind of see some of that maybe going to be changing this year, too. I, I we're, we're early in. We'll see. Anything else you're watching? Perry Mason, season two. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. I kind of need to go back and watch the second and third episodes again because I kind of like, oh, but oh, man, I'm really behind. I'm like, who was that guy? But uh, but it's good. I love the way it's made. I mean, the production value on this thing is unbelievable. Old Hollywood, old Los Angeles, old Southern California. Beautiful. Are they doing a lot of stuff on location? Because a lot I don't of it know. probably I'm is. Sure it's filmed. I, I'm guessing it is. It's filmed in California. 
Yeah, they probably you know recreate some old town. And, yeah, they got and... they they could soundstage the hell out of it though. Some of it, yeah, yeah but it looks really good. It yeah. looks really really good. You know, the music is great. They got Terrence Blanchard doing the music. Matthew Reese, he's Matthew Reese. He's a pro. We need to get that guy on the on the podcast. Oh my god, you got to go back. You got to listen to his interview on the watch. Have you listened to it? I did. I did. It's good. It yep. was hysterical. You know, he was, was on. Just... He was actually a, a guest on um, our friends Jason and Joshua's podcast. Yes, he was, That's and that was fantastic too. Yes, it he was. was. In the basement. Yes, they were drinking uh, Pandaren because he's from Wales, yeah. right? Um, I just like him. I almost want to go back and watch the Americans. Yeah, yeah. so do I. That's a lot of TV. That show's really, really good. There's a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. But yeah, I, I like it. it. They kind of just went right into it. He's very yeah. good. The uh, Della Reese. What? No, not Della Reese. What's the Della Street? What's the character's name? Street. Della Street. Della Street. She's very good. Chris Chalk, who's the um, I can't think of his name. I can't think of the character's name, but he's like his private eye. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then they got Paul what's Drake. His name? Is he Paul oh, Drake? Yeah, Paul Drake. Yeah, Paul Drake. Very good. Uh, Shea Wiggum is fantastic in his little bit parts. So it's just a really, really well done show. So I'm yep. kind of curious to see where it goes. I like it too. Like it and lastly, lastly, you know, lastly, there was a re- there was sort of a reunion show with Party Down on Stars, and I remember watching a couple episodes back in the day here and there, and kind of liked it. Now I decided to go back and do the full rewatch. It's only, I mean, they're all half hour episodes, and it's only three seasons. So I watched the first two seasons, and I've watched season three, and I gotta say, uh, is it Adam Scott? Yes, he's a future Hall of Famer. <laughs> he's he's quickly approaching like Ted Danson level wow. of Hall of Fame wow. sitcom. I mean, you look at the stuff he's in. I didn't watch Parks and Rec. Not Parks and Rec. I did not watch Parks and Rec. I saw bits and pieces of it. But Same. between that, Severance, uh, was that one? The What was the one with Nicole Kidman and Reese Witherspoon? The one that was on HBO, that short miniseries. Um, but he was in that. He's in the, he's in, uh, what's that? What was that one show? The Good Place. But his delivery is just tremendous. Yes. I had never heard of this show. Absolutely never heard of this show until I see an article about a reboot 13 years later. Since I didn't know what this was, like, oh, I'm going to go check this out. I don't think I ever had stars back in the day to know what this was about. Well, neither did I. And now it's on Hulu. So, um, I binged through the first these first two seasons also recently. Oh, I haven't gotten to the third one. Um, it's so good. It reminds me a bit of like Poker Face in the in that every episode's a different story, right? It's a different right. party, and different. you've got different characters. Uh, the ancillary characters are all different, and some of them are pretty big names. Um, oh yeah, what's that? Uh, uh, he won an Oscar a couple years ago. He J.K. Simmons. Uh, J.K. Simmons. Oh, he was he's so great. Yeah. He's so great. The concept of it is really funny. You know, you've got these caterers who all want to be actors and their life suck at the moment because they're, they're serving food to people. Well, right. This kind of goes back to our conversation with Dawn about like about the whole service industry in France. Yes. Where they're like professionals and they're really fully trained. Correct. Whereas here or in a, in a lot of the world, mostly here, I think everybody's just kind of biding their time like, oh, well, I can't totally. do anything. I'll just I'll be a waiter. Yes. You know, and, and those that can't be a waiter in a full time restaurant, they work in catering. Yeah. Right. And it's a it's a shit job and these guys, you know, they're getting drunk at work and they're doing all the things I'm assuming you shouldn't be doing at uh, one of these jobs. You're drinking, you're talking to the guests, you're like <laughs> drinking with the guests. <laughs> hey, but here's the here's the most important thing of all. The most important thing of all, Aaron. Here's the important question. Are we having fun yet? <laughs> It's so damn good. Oh, it's, it's so, so good. good. I cannot wait to watch uh, season three because I oh really enjoyed the last episode of season three of season three. Okay. All I'm going to say is magic mushrooms. Okay. Is this on, <laughs> is that on Hulu? It's on stars. And you can watch it on demand. Well, it's on stars. Yeah. I mean, I guess if you have the stars app, do you have stars? Uh, yeah. So I have to get the stars app though. Then. Okay. Got it. Yeah. I, I, and you may be able to check it on on demand too. I imagine oh, it's on right. on demand. So yeah. since you're a star is you know, since you have a subscription. I uh I love Martin Starr. He is in um Tulsa King with Sly Sly. Oh, is he in that? He is the operator and, uh, Andrea of Andrea Savage. A, with Andrew Savage. He is the operator of a cannabis store on the outskirts of Tulsa. And 
nerdy beyond nerdy, right? He's got, he's into crypto. He's into, uh, you know, cannabis products and Mr. Computer guy, Mr. Whiz kid, except that, uh, Sly comes into town as this, um, mob guy from New York and he sees, Oh, it's a cash business. This guy needs my help. He needs protection. He's That's great. Funny. You know, going back to freaks and geeks. Um, he's really, really good. Yeah. Uh, Michael, anything, uh, Angel Dig, did we get y'all? I was, uh, oh, that's it, yeah. I'm, I'm watching the NCAA tournament. Oh yeah. And, and doing poorly. I've already of lost course. three of my final four. Your brackets are busted. It's hard to lose that two years in a row, but <laughs> Way I'm to an go. overachiever. You are an overachiever. And, uh, I was watching the base, the baseball classic. The world baseball classic, yes. World baseball classic, and now all of the uh, the end of minor league baseball is baseball classic. Players come back to the teams, so we've been watching a lot of baseball. So this is a pretty interesting uh, spring training this year because all these new rules are coming into baseball this year about oh uh, yeah, with the, uh, the pitch speeding clock. the game up, the pitch clock, the bases are bigger, and you've got all these players that left spring training for two weeks to go play in the world baseball classic who didn't get a chance to kind of go through all these new rules as much as every their teammates are, have. And now they're back after last night or coming back. And the season start next week. The, the real games start next week. This is going to be a, an interesting season. And I, I wonder how uh, you guys feel about this, the shortening of games now with all these crazy rules. I don't understand why the game is as long as it is. We had one of the worst players in baseball for that, uh, Chase Utley where Chase Utley wore a batting glove on both hands and undid his gloves on every pitch. Nomar Garcia Parra. Even if he didn't swing. How the glove got loose standing there, I don't know, but he stepped out of the batter's box, undid his gloves, put his gloves back on, stepped back in again. Some crazy, you know, almost insane ritual that he had. And it it just is, you know, the games are just too long. I loved Greg Maddox. They just had a thing where he, he threw like 76 pitches in a complete game. If his, one of his games went more than two hours, he'd be like, wow, what a long day that was for him. And <laughs> yes. you see these games now, and it's like, you know, every two minutes you change pitchers. Every two minutes you do this other thing. Well, we got to put rules in it so you stop that. The pitcher's got to face three batters. The pitcher's got to deliver the ball in 30 seconds. This got to happen. That gotta, I don't know. Just it, The game's just so slow. I'm a big fan of the baseball classic, though. I think they should take the 162 games, which is a god-awful slog. They should split the season in half. And in the in-between, take three weeks off, and instead of doing the All-Star Game, do the World Baseball Classic. And in the fourth year, it's the Olympics, time for the Olympics. Interesting idea. And World Baseball Classic, you know, you limit the roster. So the U.S. had, you know, 30 guys or whatever. But if you did this, you could have, like, an East-West U.S. team. Put two teams in. Make it probably the same way. They probably had enough players to get two teams in. You know, get all of the Major League Baseball players to play. So <laughs> we're talking about the Netherlands. Some guy like got off his factory job to come to a game. And like, not that you're not really the best player in the Netherlands, but maybe you're not the best player to represent baseball. Yeah. Maybe you yeah. need to do something else. You know, I'd, I'd like to see them do this in a better way, in a bigger way, too. So it, it got great ratings. I think the teams have a big issue with it because of potential injuries, which we've seen. Uh, Clayton Kershaw couldn't pitch because he couldn't get insurance yeah. uh, because of his back issues. Super Major League Baseball. They promote this thing, yet they still had games, uh, spring training games yesterday. Same days. They shoot themselves in the foot endlessly. One of the things I hate about, you know, Major League's spring training baseball is they do these split squad games. It used to be like two bucks to go see a spring training game. Now you might spend like, you might spend like 90 bucks to go see a game. And you honestly have no idea when you go to the game if you're going to see a single player who's going to be on the major league roster. Right. Because they'll do a split squad game and all the real players are in this town and you bought tickets for the wrong town. You're playing a college baseball team. You're not actually playing the major league team because they throw yeah. a bone to a couple of Florida colleges and you play baseball against them every year. You're like, this is terrible. And wrapping this back up to television, all these changes really are about television. They are about keeping eyeballs on the screen and having people come to the screen and knowing that they're not going to be sucked into three and a half hours of TV to watch a game. All of these changes are about getting the game moving and moving faster. You know how long an NBA game is going to be. You know what you're in for. You don't get that with baseball. You have no idea when it's going to end. And it's and even football, even though football people 
people will watch games if they're 16 hours long. This is all about TV. Major League Baseball has to get ratings up. They have to get eyeballs on the screen, and they have to get the networks to keep paying up. What I think is funny, though, is they're worried about a baseball game going too long. And most baseball games are over before an NBA basketball game is. And an NBA basketball game has a fixed time limit that takes two and a half times as long to actually play the NBA basketball game. And every baseball game is over before every football game is over. The difference is, is there's so much downtime. Yeah, there's too much downtime. I, I, I totally understand why, but they're talking about, oh, the game's too long. You're like, but these games aren't really any longer than these other games. Well, yeah. I mean, the Sixers are going right now. There's about two and a half hours. Two and a half hours? Yeah. And the other side of it is that you have a generation that grew up on the games that were two hours long and now or a little over two hours. And now we're talking three hours. It has, they really have gotten longer. Right. And it's just stupid how long it is. It is stupid. Guys it is stupid. taking as much time as possible to do stuff. It's crazy. No. So I think these are good changes. I, I, I probably was a couple of years ago. I would have been, you know, Mr. Traditionalist and say, this is stupid and this is wrong and you can't do this to baseball. Screw it. It's time. You got to do this. Um, I, you, you're, people are going to ha- have to learn how to not turn their head so they don't miss a pitch. I mean fans, not not uh, yeah, yeah. hitters. Yeah. Um, anything else, Mike? That's pretty much all I've been doing. Well, And you know what's coming up, NBA playoffs. We were only there for the first round. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet, you. Um, the only thing I have, uh, well, I have two things on my um, watch English, and Mike Mike mentioned it earlier, was Mandalorian. This is the third. They've been third three episodes? season. Third season. The, a third season, but third episode this year. I think or, there's I, yeah, third, I think I've the third seen. This week. I can remember two. No, three. Yeah. I have watched three. Um, a little uneven, maybe uh, the first three, but it's still fun to watch. And the other one that I've, um, I think there's only one, one more episode. It's this interesting show, fun show on uh, Apple Plus called Hello Tomorrow. Oh, was it good? Yeah, I heard about this. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay. It is starring Billy Crudup and Allison Pill and Hank Azaria. It's a retro futuristic look of the world and like a 50s view of America, except there's a interesting futuristic world going on at the same time. Cars don't have wheels. They float. Um, there's robots, but they look like, you know, robots from the 1950s, not like a, a robot of today. Um, it's got this very 50s stylized look, uh, the way people dress and the coffee shops and everything. And Billy Crudup's character has a team of salespeople, and he's one of them, and they are selling property on the moon. Timeshares on the moon? Is that what they're doing? <laughs> they're actually selling, I think they're actually selling like homes on the moon and they don't really exist. And they keep pushing the launch dates out. And then these people are, you know, they sell these little, you know, these deeds to these things and launches to families who, you know, obviously can't afford them, who are scraping up their money. So the whole thing's kind of a scam. And Billy Cripp is trying to figure out how to uh, ultimately get out of the scam that he's kind of created. And it's, it's done really well. So those are my uh, watchings, plus what you guys had already talked about. And we're on to another whiskey from... The third one. The third one from... Our final. Uh, our final one from the Elements of Isla, from our friends at uh, Impex Beverages. Thank you again to those guys. Um, what's our third one? Third one is the Elements of Isla Sherry Cask. It is matured in first fill and refill sherry butts and hogsheads. And is bottled at a higher strength of 54.5, like the bourbon cask, to fully showcase the whiskey's natural personality. This is a big difference in color to, compared to our other two. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's got some color. Now, we'll see how this goes. I'm not the, the biggest fan of the sherry cask stuff. We'll yeah, see how but you goes. like a sherry smoky. This is true. Smoky sherry. I think, again, like Mike said before, this one does not have a lot of vaporiness. And that makes me scared now because of the punch. Like the last one, right? Yeah. Totally. All right. Going in. Me too. Oh. Hmm. 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 Very fruity. Very, very fruity. Oh, my gosh. Fruit bomb. It smells really good, though. And this hot. one's got more vapor. I think this one's more vapory than the, the bourbon cask one. I think it's hotter than the last one, actually. I think Mike jumped ahead. Did you taste it? I jumped in. Both feet. Yeah. <laughs> Both feet, huh? You should have led uh, with your tongue. Well, not with your feet. Well, that's nice. 
So the first one, you're getting a lot of alcohol, right? The first one, but you're getting a lot of fruit. Wow. Oh, yeah. 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 And there's a lot of like, you know, all those lovely baking spices and all yeah. that good stuff. Boy, you get a nice stone fruit pie. Oh, I, was getting, I was getting dates for some reason. Yeah. Wow. Dates, raisins, dried cherries. Maybe. Hmm. All right. I'm going for a second second shot. Wow. Boy, the other two were like all up front. This one's much more all over the place. Well, no. You know what? No. I take that back. It's also first third. It's not your, yeah. as you would say, Mike, front to back. Yeah. It's all up front. It's kind of dry. Yeah, it is. A little, not super dry, though. No, but so I wonder what kind of uh, sherry cast this was. Mm. Did, did it... You mean sherry variety, like Oloroso variety. or Fino? Yeah. Or... Yeah. I wonder if it's Fino, actually. A little less of a finish than the bourbon cask. Yeah. Yeah. I get more smoke off of this one, I think, than the other two. Yeah, this one has a little bit more like a like a barbecuey kind of thing, but I don't think it's like an Oloroso. No, no, that, no, or 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 a PX. It doesn't no. have the sweetness of those two. No, 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 definitely not. You know, you think more like a Fino? Could be like a little drier. I could see this being a Kilhoman cask because they do a lot of wine finishes. They do a lot of sherry finishes, a lot of weird finishes. A lot of they've done Fino. I don't see that like at uh, some of the other stories there. Well, they, they have the same two notes in there talking about a South Coast distiller and a North Coast distiller. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm not sure it would be Kilhoman because are they North or South? Aren't they? Uh, they're the, actually on the West Coast. The West, maybe? Yeah. So, and again, maybe it, maybe it's them yeah. and they're just being secretive. The the second, third taste, this one's getting better. It's like, I, I think like I almost felt like I had to like adjust from the bourbon cask, you know? It's not super rich. I don't think it's really heavy. I think it's a, a lighter kind of a drier kind of a mm. sherry. It's light years different than the other two. It's really really nice. And and you know what? I'm not finding it as dry as before. Now I'm getting a little more like a light sweetness. You know, the first one had sh- was a sherry cask, right? It was both, right? It wasn't sherry and bourbon cask. We had a bourbon cask, and now we have a sherry cask. And there's a little bit of everything on this cask from the other two. Interesting. Love the color of it too. Oh, the color is just great. It's beautiful. On the side of the little bottle, it says flavor profile, smoke tea, autumn fruit, winter spice. Smoke tea? Would that be the Lapsang Oolong? (laughs) It could well be. Is that the one? Is that the one? Yeah, that's the smoky one. Yeah. On the uh, cask edit, it says on the side of the bottle, smoke, fresh fruit, and wood spice. And then on the other one, the bourbon cask, it says coal. Tropical fruit and maple syrup. Ooh, ooh! I have to go back to that. Yeah, this one's growing on me. My bottle must be different. Mine says I shouldn't drink this if I'm pregnant, and I shouldn't drive or operate heavy machinery. Turn oh. the bottle a little bit. Just oh, turn the bottle. sorry. <sighs> Let me go this way with it. Now I got it. <laughs> Boy, I do like it too. It's very good. The three of them are great. Yeah, it's not totally my jam, the the sherry cask, but it's very good. And I'm glad we did them the order we did them in. I do too. Yeah, I agree. I think I you totally did it correctly. Who knew? Well, you know, it's interesting. None of these were very highly peated. This worked out really well. Because I think our taste buds would have been blown out if this one was first. Oh, my God, yeah. Yes, yeah. I agree. Right? If you had to rank them, how would you go? I would rank bourbon cask one, the cask edit two, and then the sherry cask three. Huh. Well, I would also go one with the bourbon cask. I would go sherry cask two. And and the the third the what is it cask edit cask edit yeah three now they're close I'm not saying that like you know because I rank them that way that one is like ten times better than the other I think they're again as we like to say on the other uh, on our other channels it's a really tight grouping no it is I, 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 I agree with Angelo I think I'd go bourbon sherry and then cask edit and and I think they're all you know B pluses if you're throwing something out there but they're they're all really good. The, uh, I would definitely look into buying the, the, the bourbon and the edit one, for sure. I just like the whole concept. I, I love the concept, too. And it tastes great. I mean, they're, yeah. they're all really good whiskeys. I think the bourbon one is my – I mean, the bourbon is definitely my favorite of the three. But the other ones are close. I mean, they're, they're, they're you know, neck and neck. Yeah, yeah. We could probably talk quite a while if we wanted to just about what uh, Elixir is doing and all the things that they're doing with all their different um, brands that they've got. They've got the yep. this, they've got Port Askig, they've got uh, Single Malts of Scotland. Is that what it's called? Right. I right. believe that's theirs. And don't forget, they got Black Todd. Well, and don't forget, they're building distillery. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you guys see that uh, Crazy Mitch 
and um oh yeah they're on tour they're going to they're tour. in asia they're going to asia mitch and um yeah mitch and chanel and chanel that ought to be absolutely insane i commented on their instagram post and said we got to have you two on the show did they say anything they did he's like oh i was like both of them like, yeah both of you of course because they both went on yeah 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 Definitely. We had Chanel on with um, with Julie. With Julie Hamilton. Yes. Julie Hamilton. Yeah. And then we had uh, Mitch on by himself. Yeah. And then we had Mitch on with Dawn. Oh my God! Yes. They're all insane people. Oh, they're great. They're awesome. They're great. I can't imagine what that tour is going to be. They're going to have a three month hangover. With <laughs> no kidding. Okay, so we haven't done this in a while, and I thought, I don't know if you guys had prepped for this all. Before we get to our last category of what to watch, I thought we could talk about some folks who are uh, no longer with us. In memoriam, really departed. I have a little list. Michael, do you have a list too? I just put a small list together. The most recent one, Lance Reddick just passed away. Which I know. He's, he's uh, going to be in uh, John Wittick 4. Which comes out this week, I think, right? It's sad on a number of levels. One, he was 60. Yeah, he's not, he's not, he's not so old lot. enough to pass away. No, 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 no. And um, he's been such a great character actor in so many things in the last. Now, just out of curiosity, years. could you name just two of the things that he was in? Gee, I don't know. The <laughs> Wire and John Wick. Oh, and Oz. And Oz. He was in Oz. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, well, for me, uh, fringe he was great in fringe yeah and uh, fringe. uh tom sizemore unexpectedly passed away as well yeah. he, uh, tom sizemore. he had a, he had a stroke a great actor little personal life problems but a great actor saving private ryan boy that was such a great movie yep and it was yep. really because of him you know it was a really great cast and he kind of kept it all together in the really played richard belzer passed away did he really the bells uh, uh it ended january beginning of february yeah. oh what's get that? out yeah. The also, Bells. another Baltimore connection, right? Because yeah. he was in Homicide. He played the same character longer than anyone else in TV history? And in the most crossover shows. Yeah. Well, who was he? His character on uh, Law & Order. Law & Order. He was oh, I didn't, that, I didn't same, watch. that same character from Homicide, he transfers yeah. up to New York and becomes the oh, okay. And he's in all the other Law & Orders. And he's in all the other Law & Orders, and they crossed yeah. over to other shows. And he was actually on, like, A Man About You. And... <laughs> Belzer was amazing. His stand-up comedy from the 70s and 80s was off the charts good. He is part of that early National Lampoon group of comedians who didn't get on Saturday Night Live in the early 70s. They, for whatever reason, didn't get a gig with uh, Lauren Michaels or they just, that wasn't their thing. And he was sort of, he was pretty irreverent. There's a National Lampoon album called That's Not Funny, That's Sick that basically stars him and Bill Murray, and Christopher Guest, and Brian Doyle Murray. I think those wow. are the four names that are on the... And Is that all they got? That's all they got. And it's basically a radio show, and a recurring character throughout the whole, both sides of the record, is Richard Belzer being like a late night talk show host, and people calling in to whatever you call in at two o'clock in the morning back, you know, on AM radio back in the 70s. It's hilarious. He was great. It was great. It was a great guest on Howard Stern, part of the whole uh, Friars Club in New York. Very funny. Big miss. Who else you got down there, Mike? Anybody else? And uh, the other one, one uh, briefly, was Raquel Welch, the last of the you know the, the great sex symbols from that era. When did that happen? A month ago. Seriously, they have these things called papers. Let me pick them up, read them. No, I don't pick yeah. up a paper. You ever hear about no. that? No. Well, no, I don't. Do she that. was iconic. Uh, she was more probably of the whole list of people that have passed away. She's probably the biggest icon in the on, of that list. She was the sex symbol of her era. The I would say, right? Yeah. She was the, yeah, she the was up there. Marilyn Monroe of her era, and yeah. um, and not a horrible actress, right? She got was she the last poster in the Shawshank Redemption? Yes, right. It was Raquel Welch, and yes. that was it. Ten thousand BC or ten yes. million BC, whatever million that was. BC. Yeah. One million BC. Yeah. Couple other names on there. Uh, just a couple days ago, Robert Blake died. Um, oh Greta. yeah, yeah. yeah Robert, Robert, I think he was eighty or eighty-two. You know, he had an interesting last twenty years of his life. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> say the least. Yeah, say the least. And uh, famous for Beretta. You know, you know, Aaron. If you can't do the time, don't do the crime. Don't do the crime. Right. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. Ask Huggy Bear. Um, uh -huh. 
Let's see. Antonio Fargas. Antonio Fargas, right. Let's see. Uh, well, I have three other ones on the on the list that are they're kind of way below the other names we've already talked about. Lisa Loring passed away. Damn. Who's that? She was Wednesday on the Adams Family on the oh, TV really? show. Oh, really? Yeah, she passed away. Oh, wow. Lance Kerwin. Who's that? Really? Lance James, Kerwin James at 15, James uh, 15. back in the 70s. Yeah, yeah. sitcom. Um, and many other shows in the seventies, TV shows, Adam Rich, the youngest of the eight is enough group of kids oh. passed away, uh, had many troubles with, with, uh, alcohol and, and, uh, and drugs. How old was he? 50 something. Yeah. Wow. Very sad. So, uh, sorry to hear about all those folks passing some, some great names in there. Um, and we'll make that turn to what we want to watch. These are shows that we haven't started or maybe just kind of started or things we've heard about or movies we've heard about that we want to watch. Go. <laughs> uh, I'll start. I, uh, I'm waiting for all the Marvel stuff to come back. And unfortunately, all the Marvel stuff is being pushed back further. So I don't know what that means. Why is that? It's unfortunate. I don't know. I thought all the shows were gonna, would be back by now, you know, March. Yeah. And instead, it seems like a lot of them aren't going to be until sometime in July. So I don't know if there's issues with CGI or if they're trying to time things with you know the movie pushbacks that the TV shows might give something away. So now the movies have been pushed back further, so the TV shows go back. You know, I don't know. Huh. Uh, the new Flash film is supposed to be coming out again. That's been pushed back. I want to see that. Ezra Miller is the Flash. He is another character in real life who uh, has some issues that. <laughs> He may not be invited back. They're going to do a multiverse version of The Flash. And in that uh, multiverse, there's going to be the Michael Keaton Batman. So I'm interested to see uh, how that all interrelates. And you bring back Batman as Michael Keaton. Playing Batman at the age that Michael Keaton is now. That he's been Batman now for, you know, 40 years or whatever. And he's he's an aged Batman. So it'll this be interesting to see how that one. works. Like 1990 or 1989? It might have been earlier than that, yeah. Wow. Like that. It was the 80s. I know that. So I'm looking forward to that. And then, uh, you know, Ange, you threw out a couple of shows that I probably should start watching. Ange, what you got? Anything uh, you want to uh, have on the list? Should we go with the biggie? Or should, we, should I save the biggie for last? No, well, whatever. It doesn't matter. Okay. Well, the biggie, starting this Sunday, we're taping, what's today, 22nd? Yeah. March 22nd. So on Sunday, Succession Season 4, oh, yeah. the final yeah. season starts. So I, I am very pumped for that. And then yeah, and you've too. got, um, I want to see the Luther movie on Netflix. I do too. The Fallen Sun. I'm kind of curious not, to see I, that. Here it's bad, but I'm going to watch it anyway. Yeah, I kind of dropped off with Luther after like the first like the first three seasons. It has gone down, and the last movie wasn't great. I, I like him. But you know what? Go back and watch The Wire. Yeah. You know, a little, a little uh, what was his name? Stringer. Stringer. Stringer Bell. Stringer Bell. Stringer Bell. Let's talk some more about The Wire. Have you watched it? Apparently, it's the greatest show that's ever made. <laughs> it's up there. So, you like it. You're an attention to detail guy. You got to pay attention to the wire. Does Mike know that we are going to have a future episode of what we watch? Or actually, one show, one drink with a uh, a, a whiskey um, blogger. Bozzy. We're going to do an episode with him and watch the very first episode. Ah, uh, so good. So good. So, Mike, watch, finally watch it. <laughs> you got to watch the first episode. I watched a little bit of the first episode of Mandalorian. I wasn't super into it. Maybe no. it's just because it's been so long. So I will go back and try it again because I, you know, I've done that. I've kind of been like kind of poo poo to show. Then I go back and I'm like, oh my God, I love it. So, you know, happened with the Americans. Yeah. It happened with Severance. Yep. It happened with many shows. Um, so I'll go back and I'll, and I'll try to, you know, give that some time. I want to see Luther Succession. Um, there's a show that I've been hearing a lot about called Swarm. Oh, I heard about this too. On Prime yeah. Video. The woman who's in it, I can't remember her name. I know she was in that, what was that one show that took place in New York in the 70s with the prostitution and the porn and with James Franco. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. It was It was a Dave Simon right. show. I know the one you're talking about. She was one of the prostitutes. She was really good. I can't remember her name, but the show looks pretty good. Apparently, it's like a whole thing with like about stardom and fandom and all that kind of stuff. So I'm kind of curious to, to check that out. And there's another show on HBO Max called on HBO called Rain Dogs, hmm. a British show. I don't know anything about it, but it's got really good buzz. So I'd like to check it out. The uh, tagline on IMDb, 
an unconventional love story between a working class single mum, her young daughter, and a privileged gay man. Oh, so wow. I don't know. It, it looks kind of interesting, but I want to check it out. And lastly, comes out this week, John Wick 4. There you go. You got to see it. Um, I've only got a couple things. Uh, something coming to Apple Plus called the, the Last Thing He Told Me with Jennifer Garner. Oh, by the way. Oh, by the way. Speaking of Jennifer Garner. I'd like to speak about her. She, I love her. I am not a huge fan, but on Party Down, yes. positively delightful. Oh, in the new season? It must be in the new season. She's in season, season three. She's really oh, good. Oh, good. Her and Adam Scott have a really good chemistry. I like it. So I don't know if it's in this show, The Last Thing He Told Me, or in Party Down, but one of those, I believe, um, what's this, the actor's name? Vincent Garber? Is that his name? He played her father in Alias. And they're together again okay. in either Party Down or in this last thing he told me. I'm thinking it's the last thing he told Apparently, me. Apparently, they may be rebooting Alias, which I am totally for. And I love the Alias. Yes. Really? And I love okay. her. And I, I like that she's kind of, hmm. I think she's done this interesting thing where she's sort of, I'm guessing, motherhood kind of took the, was primary for her. Right. She stepped away from acting a bit. And she's coming back. She did that interesting little show on... HBO a couple years ago called I want to say camping was it camping it was it, I think the Duplasses were behind it and it was fun it was kind of uncomfortable because it was about you know weird relationships and things and she's kind of the leader of trying to get all these couples together in the going out on I, I'm not even sure it was called I camping but I remember there was okay. camping in it so um, but she was very good in it and yeah, I like yeah. seeing her again and, and I saw this weird commercial with during the NCAA playoffs for some, let's say it's insurance. And she's sitting in the front seat of a car with Barkley and. Yeah, and, yes, and, and they're singing. Yeah. Yeah. On the road again. It. Yeah. Yeah. It's the oh, same it's credit, credit card. card. Right. They all it's do the same credit, credit card. Oh, Capital oh, it's, One. It's, it's, it's Capital it. One. Capital One. Well, they're all driving to the, the basketball games. So they're on the road again. And it's, it's, it's uh, Willie, Willie yes. Nelson <laughs> and her and, and uh, Shaq, or not Shaq, uh, yes. Barkley and Sam Jackson and Sam Jackson and uh, Spike Lee. Um, you know, there's a bunch of stuff that I've seen out that, that I, I be wrong. Of course, Succession, I want to see too, of course. Something is coming out called Rabbit Hole um, on Paramount Plus with um, Kiefer Sutherland. Looks interesting. Um, and uh, okay. season two, I don't know if you guys watched this. I know I talked about it at one point. Um a single drunk female. I really like that. Yeah. And that's coming back for season two in April. And uh, there was something else that um, I sort of kind of want to watch Waco. It's like an anniversary of that. It's like yeah. 20 years, 30 years since Waco. And uh, so that's, yeah. okay. Oh, Oh, and um, I forgot to watch it. It started last weekend, but I, I meant to watch it and I have to go get it on demand is lucky Hank. Yeah. You know, I tried to watch it last night I don't know. I, I got to get a feel for the show. I like it, him. It's hard. Yeah, to... so do I. But what, what was interesting with the show, what kind of throws me off, right? He's at this, like, I guess, like, you know, average college or whatever. He's a he's an English professor, yeah. I think. Right. But you look at the place. The college is just like, you know, every room is like beautiful and, you know, all kind of modern and new. Like if you did like a. Uh, Which is not the truth. You know, like a craftsman, you know, those craftsman bungalows. So what are you saying? You don't have that experience for your college? No, please. Every college I've ever been to, the buildings are all like old. My and kids' just, schools look like shit. They give them a you know? bad paint job. And, and them, then you also, know? you know, the the wife is like a teacher or a principal or a teacher at like a middle school or a, at a high school. And he's a teacher at a college. And they got this beautiful house with these beautiful furnishings. And they're all immaculate, you know. And then the same thing with the um, with shrinking. Like, what's his name? Is, is a therapist, um, uh, Jason Siegel. And he's in California. And he's got this spectacular house. The criticism here is that it's not realistic kind for of. that those jobs to have those kinds of homes. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just kind of funny. You know how they have these like pristine homes and all that yeah, stuff. Not it's realistic not, enough. No, not 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 in that sense. You know, they're all driving really expensive cars. They're all driving. Yeah. They're all in these really beautiful homes. Huh. It's just it's it it kind of throws me off a little bit to a degree. And it's not supposed to be a, like a great college. It's like a like a sub Ivy League school, right? Yeah, I guess. Like yeah, like every other college. It's like if you're not in the top twenty, then you're just a college, right? But I'll give it another try. I'll give it some time. Yeah, I would too. It's him, and yeah, I, I like Odin Kirk. He can make shitty things good. I think. Right. All right, gentlemen, we are going to wrap this baby up. 
what we watch when we drink is done for the evening. Um, this was a fun one. We have not talked to us general TV for a while. And we have to thank our friends again, Sam Filmus, Chris Udi, and the crew at uh, Impex Beverages for three wonderful little whiskeys. New to the U.S. New to the U.S. This, this series is new to the U.S., correct. And um, I guess we're going to start seeing them in stores soon. Um, yeah, and, and the really, Cascade, it'll be around $55, the bourbon around 75 and the sherry around 80 so yep very reasonable approachable very reasonable very very approachable I mean, very reasonable good. is relative these days but wow. given the times that's pretty good but the single cask versions from the elements of isla are off the chart price wise so this is very reasonable to be in that world and be lucky enough to to taste things that Oliver Chilton has put together. The great Ollie Chilton has one of the great blunders on, on the face of this planet, putting whiskeys together. And he's a nice guy. And he's a nice guy. Ollie, if you're listening, watch on the on the podcast one day. That'd be fun. That's right. Yep. All right, boys. Another uh, another one down the down the chute. And uh, we will get together again with another episode soon. All right, man. Cheers. Cheers, lads. Arrivederci. Ciao. Bye-bye. If you enjoy this show, please subscribe on Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, Google, Audible, and anywhere else you get your podcasts. You can also find us on boozedancing.com. And if you have any questions, comments, show or drink suggestions, email us at boozedancing at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you.